Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're joining from the world. I thank you very much for being here. We're here to talk about the power of deep listening. So I want to set the agenda for you before we get started. So the flow is going to be, I'm going to kickstart the conversation with a story to set the context. I'm going to share with you some of my churnings, my thought process on that subject. I'm going to give you some pointers on how to build a strength and skill set. In today's case, it is around deep listening. And then I'm going to take you through a meditation exercise that's going to put all of this theory into practice. And then finally, I'd like to open it up for questions. Okay. Now, you are welcome during the entire course of this conversation. I noticed that there's a beautiful camaraderie that's building and there's commentary and discussion that's happening amongst you all. I welcome that, but I just want to say that I'm not going to be following because it's very hard for me to be able to speak and be following this commentary that's happening on the chat. So when I open it up for questions, I want you to please, even if you have posted the question before, to repost it in that Q&A window. So that way it'll come to my attention. I want to be sure that I go ahead and address your question, right? How does that sound for a flow? Give me a quick uh, heart sign if you think you like it. Uh, if you have any questions, any suggestions about what else you'd like to see. Um, maybe make sure your phones are not on. Yeah, they're not on, they're on silent and you know, yes, yeah, so thank you, Katie. So if there's other people um, that, um, if you know, if you wanna go ahead and put yourselves on mute, you know, so that way you can be 100% concentrated on this discussion without any other distractions. So I wanna first of all, start today by explaining about this breathing exercise that I just showed you all today. Now. I did made you do a very simple thing. I asked that you breathe in through your nostrils and then breathe out through your mouth. Now, there's a reason, there's a very ancient pranayama technique that talks about that, that breathing in through the nose has a very definitive purpose. And that is the two nostrils, there is a balance of the male, the masculine energy, and the feminine energy that when you're breathing in through your nostrils, assuming your nostrils are not blocked, you're actually working towards balancing them. Also, breath has a way through the nostrils, you know, this built in, um, there's tendrils in there, there is fibers in there that actually prevent from the air, dirty air from going in. So there's actually a filtration process. And then the third thing, if you notice that I asked that you breathe in and then I asked you to hold your breath at the top and then wait for a count of two and then you breathe out and you let the exhale go long and then you hold at the bottom of your lungs when you're completely empty for a couple of seconds before you breathe in. Now there's a reason for that as well, that the mind, the brain and the breath are all very connected. So as you are thinking fast, you naturally tend to breathe fast. Or maybe you hold your breath you without even realizing it. As you tend to breathe fast, your actions are fast. And so just like calming the mind through meditation can help you to breathe easy and deep, so also breathing easy and deep helps you to calm your mind. So this, my friends, is a very simple, quick fix way for you to, regardless of whatever else is going on, so much is out of control right now. We know we don't have ability to take, take things under charge and be able to change the outcome of, let alone myself, other people and um, the situations, etc. But the one thing I can do to reclaim my sense of peace and equanimity is by controlling my breath. So just within 10 seconds of, you know, 10 breaths or whatever it took, so maybe 15, 20 seconds, you would have noticed a shift in how your mind begins to slow down. All right, so today we're here to talk about deep listening as a means of healing. 
So I want to start off with a story, something that moved me deeply. Have you heard of the name of Ashley Babbitt? Ashley Babbitt was the first woman who was killed in the recent riots in the capital in the United States. And she was a woman from Southern California, from California where I come from. I was in San Diego, she comes from San Diego. And I was shocked because here on the West Coast, we call it the left coast, you know, everything is liberal, progressive, educated. You know, usually it seems, seems to be pretty uniform. We all, you know, kind of think and, you know, do behave the same way. But when I saw that happen, things had come hit home too close. And so I wanted to dig in to see what provoked this woman to take up this very violent stance to fly all the way across the country and decide to be part of that group that decided to storm the Capitol. Now, I just want to make a caveat. I'm not here to give any political commentary, but I'm just here to understand and I'm just sharing with you my process of how it surprised me, what I found out when I dug into her life, and what is it I think we can all learn from to take away and create better lives for ourselves and for our communities and for the world. So Ashley Babbitt, for those of you who have never heard her name, so she was a U.S. Air Force veteran, 35 years in age, 15 years of which she would serve our country. Now, when her brother was interviewed after she was killed, he was expressing that, you know, a good part of her adult life when her brain was formed and she knew what she was doing, she had sacrificed that for this nation, for the United States, by serving in the Air Force. Now, a woman who has that level of sacrifice then goes on to storm the Capitol and then, you know, unfortunately get killed by this, by the police, is something that does not seem to compute. So I read on, I went to research some more about it. And so what I find out is at the bottom of it all, she had some grievances and she felt like, you know, a country that I had sacrificed and surrendered and gave so much of my life up for is not listening to me. She had some needs that she felt were not being heard. And then I also found out in the midst of all of the things, I mean, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of issues that, you know, that led her to keep doing what she did and ended up in this unfortunate circumstance. But the one thing that stood out as a data point for me is that she had started a small business after she retired from the Air Force. She was doing, she was running a pool cleaning company. And then she took a small business loan and believe it or not, folks, her interest rate on that business loan was 169%. Sit with that for a second. 169% for a war veteran, for somebody who sacrificed their life for this country, trying to do, you know, get back onto her feet, trying to do everything she can to be able to be a good civil citizen. So clearly somewhere along the way, something fell, you know, through the cracks. And she felt that she was not, she was getting a very raw deal. Now, I'm not, again, I'm not here to talk about the political commentary and stuff, but the point that I think I want to take away from this, and I have certainly taken away, and I wish we all can, is to say, why are we not hearing each other? What's happening here? Why is there such big crevices, these chasms, these divides that are getting bigger and bigger? And so, one of the things, a trend that has taken over the world is social media. Now think about it, 3.5 billion people today are on social media, some form, way, shape, or form. Two out of three Americans are using Facebook alone, just one social media platform. The trend was about three hours a day at average human being spent on social media, but now with the pandemic, like every other trend that was already set in motion, this has become accelerated four and a half hours a day an average human being is spending on social media. Now, what does social media do? It's, social media is a tool like anything else. A tool is not necessarily good or bad, right? 
But what has become of it is that it has become a platform for us to broadcast, right? So instead of having conversations like we did before, when we needed to get a point across, we need to sit down, we need to make eye contact, we need to have some pleasantries, hello, welcome, cup of tea, or not, are you warm enough, cold enough, whatever, right? So we had these things that made us have these social engagements called conversations. But now we can sit in our pajamas in our dark bedroom and go off and start posting things, you know, whether it's real or not, whether it's a figment of my imagination or whether fact-checked or not. And then I feel like I'm doing my part of the communication. And therefore, there is no true conversation. Now, tying back to the story of Ashley Babbitt, she used to, on average, 2020, she was sending out 50 Twitter messages every day, 50 tweets. And on the day of the elections, she sent out 77 tweets. So clearly, she was trying to express, she was putting the word out, but unfortunately, she didn't feel like she was being heard. And so in the midst of this barrage of putting out messages, as we've seen now, political candidates on both sides, we have be be that's become the normal where we are only focused about what we have to say. And if you looked at the presidential debate in the United States, I know there's people all over the world, but I'm sure either you saw it, saw it live, recorded, or heard it in the news, it was like a shouting match. I felt like this country, and I would think, imagine conversations globally on that day it reached an all-time low when these people are supposedly the most running for the most powerful seat on this planet. We're just shouting, talking on top of each other, not giving each other a chance to complete their sentences. And then when you see what happened on January 6th, the siege of the Capitol, you can see how all of those previous trends culminated into that completely ugly quagmire, fiasco, where five people died at the most prestigious place in this country, in the Capitol building. So, folks, let us try and understand what is it that is we're losing here? What is that is causing this trend to go out of control? So, as I've said in every single one of my talks, we are now on this trajectory where technology is no longer going to be a choice. It is, there is no other way. We all are going to have be consumed by technology. We're all going to be consuming technology, social media, etc. But the unfortunate thing is that none of those tools, none of those game-changing, life-altering technologies are coming with any sort of a manual and saying, where are your boundaries? Right? So we begin to bring them into our homes, bring them into our living rooms and then into our bedrooms and into our beds. And then there is a complete siege on our minds, on our lives that is happening that we are not putting any sort of game rules, certain conditions. And therefore, the repercussions of that are turning out to be things that are beyond our comprehension. We don't even fully understand what happens by these different effects of the social media on us. So much news, whether it's real or not. Right? And so media, to be able to stand out of all of this cacophony of sounds, this complete competition for our attention, has to sensationalize news to be able to stand out. So as they say, if it bleeds, it leads. And so they need to do that to be able to get our attention. Therefore, in that process, it's becoming harder for us to pick up the subtle things, the quiet aspects, the understated messages in the human experience, in the stories of the many Ashley Babbitts, perhaps around us, maybe even within us. And so this ability to listen is paramount because it is the gateway to understanding. 
our ability to pay attention to what we hear, the sounds, from the sound becoming information, information becoming knowledge, from knowledge being transferred into wisdom, which shapes my decision-making, my intuitions, my choices. There requires there to be a certain space that seems to be constantly being under threat of being contracted and disappearing. Now, when we lose this ability to listen, not just hearing, listen, we have the threat of this world becoming a dangerous place. And folks, we're just not talking about the United States. You see, look at the polarization happening. The Philippines, Turkey, Brazil, India now, right? So there's this chasm of these people of ideologies, bitter rivalry. Nobody is willing to stand down. Nobody is willing to sit and compromise. Nobody is willing to sit and have a face-to-face, eye-to-eye, humble, honest conversation. And so the question then becomes, what is the solution? Because we're not being taught this in schools. Our children are not being taught the art of listening, the art of good conversation. What are the elements that make hearing and comprehending an integral process? So if nobody's teaching us, and this is becoming even a little more paramount to our existence on this planet, where do we go from here? Do we all just cut off our social media friends and just exit from that? Do we all go hunker down in a bunker or just maybe leave this country and go find something else like Americans just migrate to Canada because it's, you know those people are much more uh, calmer and sweeter? What's the solution? So I'm going to offer to you some science-led ways in which we can all individually develop the art of deep listening. Okay, So I'm going to share with you five different steps in which you can from today start practicing to deepen your ability to comprehend what's going on around you. Number one, silence. Taking the time to be in silence is something that I cannot emphasize enough. We need to find time when we're not being distracted, when we're not being constantly stimulated. Now, whether you call it meditation, whether you call it a quiet time, whether you call it your prayer, call it whatever you want, but learning to take time or putting that into your program, scheduling that, is a very important step, first step, in being able to create that space in which you can start being able to process the signals, the sensory stimulus that's coming at you. Now, sometimes we are in circumstances where, you know, silence is impossible because just the nature of where we live or where we work and the conditions we, our families, etc., responsibilities and so on. So sometimes that means it just could be quietness. Could we take three minutes of quietness, minimum? This is the lowest denominator. Three minutes of quietness, if not silence, to give our brain a chance to breathe, to just be. Second step. Sit down at any place at a given time And notice how many channels you can hear. I call this listening to channels. That is, just observe with your eyes open or eyes closed, you know, where there's all these different sounds coming in, this cacophony of things, there's all these things intertwined. See if you can separate that and say, okay, I can hear the birds chirping. I can hear the, the trees, the leaves rustling. I can hear the brook, the water, the rush, the stream. I can hear the children, the laughter, the playfulness. I can hear the bus and the the traffic at a distance. Okay, So see if you can compartmentalize, see if you can pick these different channels up. Step number three. 
We all have mundane noises that we're exposed to at any given point, right? So like the noise of the blender, the noise of the washing machine go off, the ticking of the clock, right? Or the starting of the neighbor's engine, which is a very familiar noise. If you do it, you know, hear it over and over again. See if you can find a rhythm, a pattern. Create, call this the choir, your own personal choir, the hidden choir. And see if you can find the pattern there. Number four, change your listening position. So when you're having a conversation, whether you're listening to somebody face to face or you're listening to something, a, a conversation happening between two individuals, whether it's on TV or, or across the room, what have you. See if you can participate in any one of this listening exercise from different perspectives. Can I come from a place of empathy? Can I come from a place of being critical? Can I come from a place of being appreciative? Can I come from a place of being accepting? Can I come from a place of being active? Can I come from a place of being passive? Right? This is something that, you see, the human being, because of our prefrontal cortex, we are blessed that we are the only species on the planet that can involve in such a complex. This is part of the executive brain. This is a very sophisticated function for us to be able to change our perspective in the same act, in the same scene that's going on in front of you. It's very empowering to be able to see a situation from different perspectives. So you can gain insight into how the same message, the same process can be perceived in so many different ways. So you can have some sort of empathy towards where that person is coming from. Why does that person think that way? What are some of the forces? You don't have to agree, but you can be empathetic. You can see the evolution that has led that person to believe and say those words that they're saying right now. And in that process, it helps you to become closer to the point that is being shared, to that viewpoint that is being held. Doesn't mean you agree, I'm not saying that, but that coming closer expands your brain. It serves you. It helps you to hold something that may be something that is completely outside your comfort zone. But only if you have the willingness, the openness, the vulnerability to see it from, look at it from the different perspective, from a, a new angle. You could possibly have a greater appreciation and that greater appreciation could possibly bring you to a position where there's some reconciling, where there's some solution, where you can find some common ground, where there's a healthy growth there. Number five. It's an acronym here. It's RASA. RASA in Hindi or Sanskrit means essence or juice. So R, receive. Somebody's saying something, we pay attention and therefore we are receiving what is being said. A, appreciate. So you know how as we're saying some things, you'll say, uh-huh, mm, okay. You know those words, those things like, you know, so like an active listening. So, you, so they know that they're being understood. And then third, S, summarize. So when you hear something, there's a very powerful technique to be able to summarize what you think you heard from the other person. You repeat it and thereby the other person gets a validation that, okay, this person's actually not only paid attention, but is able to say the same thing back. Right? It opens up their heart that you're giving them that attention and that undivided point of view. And the final A is asking questions. When you ask questions and clarifications, it deepens your understanding of what's being said. And that makes for a very active listening exercise. It makes other person felt really heard. 
So there you go, folks. These are the five steps that you can start practicing today that will help you to become a good listener and help the healing process. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this real quick. A, number one, silence. Number two, different channels. See if you can just parse out the different noises that are coming at you, all the things that you've been surrounded by, and see if you can find different tracks. Number three, listening to the mundane and finding the hidden quiet in it. Number four, listening positions, changing your position. And number five, rasa. Okay, with that, I'd like to now dive into our practice. And before I dive into the practice, I want you to please stretch your arms up. We've been sitting here for half an hour or maybe longer if you've been here before I got I started the session. I want you to please create a big circle in front of you. Nice stretched out circle with your fingers interlocked. And push your palms as far out, creating a nice stretch in your upper back, opening your shoulder blades. And then I want you to look down. This is like the healing living well. I call it the living well, the well upon which you can go and seek any source of wisdom. It's the well that we collect and we gather at a village at least once in a day and we share wisdom. We share our experiences. Coming back up, and I want you to repeat this exercise one more time. Stretch, interlock your fingers, squeeze them out, opening your shoulder blades, and then look in as you're exhaling. And bring yourself back up. Sit in an upright position. If you're seated, if you're standing, the same. If you're lying down, that's okay. Just lay yourself completely comfortably in alignment, keeping your spine straight, shoulders dropped, jaw released, arms rested. If you're sitting, feet flat on the ground or cross-legged if you feel more comfortable that way. And I want you to start by observing your breath. Taking in deep, comfortable breaths through the nostril. And exhaling through the mouth. Noticing the air going in through both the nostrils evenly, hoping that your nostrils are not clogged. And then exhaling the warm air. this exercise, we will build on something we did last week, which is the sphere of the mental activity and the center of awareness. Imagine there is a big sphere in front of you, all around you. Now on the surface of the sphere, on the perimeter, is the mind which understands, which experiences, which processes the different signals. And at the center, of this sphere is the observer, the one who observes the sensations, the experiences, the different mental activity. At the center 
is pure awareness, also referred to as the spiritual heart. And on the perimeter is all the interface with the world. So imagine this to be like a wheel where there's spokes that go from the center out to the rim. And this is your attention. So you take your awareness from the center and you can choose to put your attention anywhere on the many aspects of your mental activities, your sensations, thoughts, and feelings. Broadly divided, we can break down these different aspects of the rim into four areas. Number one is the five senses. Number two, it's the internal feelings, sensations within the body. Number three, it's the mental activities in the mind, thoughts, memories, etc. And number four is our connection with others. first three are within and the last one is without. Now again using breath as a beautiful anchor let's take our attention to the seat of the heart pure awareness. At the hub of the sphere. And with intention, let us send a spoke of our attention out to the surface, to the sensation of sound. Let only sound that you're hearing right now fill awareness. Bring your attention back to the center, to the hub. Pure awareness. Go ahead and send a spoke out. This time to the sensation of sight. Even if your eyes are closed, let the gentle light from the outside coming in through the eyelids fill awareness. Just the sense of sight fills my awareness right now. your attention back to the hub to pure awareness and 
This time, let's send out a spoke to the surface, to the sense of smell. Let your attention go to the sense of smell. And only smell fills awareness. attention gently back to the hub to pure awareness and now let's send out the spoke to focus on the sense of taste on our tongue. Let only the taste that you experience on your tongue right now fill your awareness. Gently bring your attention back to the hub, to pure awareness. And now let's send out a spoke with our attention to the sensation of touch. Touch as experienced by the vast surface of the skin. Perhaps noticing the points of contact your body's making with your seat, skin on skin or clothing on skin, whatever it is. Experience the sensation of touch right now and let only that fill awareness. Bring ourselves back to the hub, to pure awareness. And this time, let us send out a spoke to the second quadrant, which is the sensations inside my body. So start with experiencing the sensations at the bottom of your feet, the soles. the toes, the 
heels. And up through the ankle. Let's go up through the shins. Noticing any sensations in that region coming up to the knees. And through the thighs to your buttocks and lower back. Notice if there's any tightness or any tension felt in this area because hips are a region where you store a lot of your stress whether you realize it or not and then gently going up through the abdomen noticing the sensations inside your abdomen cavity Going up to the region of your solar plexus, the bottom of the rib cage, through the chest region, and then through the from the fingers, the tips of the fingers, notice the sensation there. And then coming in through the palms, through the wrist, through the bones into the elbows. Up into the upper arms, the biceps, the triceps area. And then into the shoulders. to the bottom of the neck and through your throat passage up into the head into the mouth the tongue the cheeks the nasal cavity the eye sockets feeling the pressure by the eyeballs and up into your brain area and then into your scalp Sensation if you might be able to experience of the hair follicles that are at the top of your head. And then bring your attention back to the hub, the seat of pure awareness. go to the next quadrant which is the mental activity sending a spoke out to the thought processes in the mind and just observing the activity there and without any judgment without holding on or getting carried away by any thought. Just watching.
watching as these thoughts come, live their life, and disappear into the ether. Just noticing that pattern of how they emerge, sustain, and disappear. attention back to the hub, to the seat of awareness, pure silence, just being. See if you can send out a spoke to the surface and this time to the realm of connections. So with your eyes closed, notice the presence of the person that's closest to you. That could be somebody in the same room, in the same building, or perhaps somewhere in the neighborhood. Just feel the presence of that person that's physically nearest to you. Now see if you can expand that to feel the presence of people that are near and dear to your heart. It could be your family, your relatives, your best friends. See if you can expand that further to people that you work with, that you engage with on a daily basis. that further to your include everyone in your community whether it's your the town you live in the village the city whatever the case may be feel their presence See if you can extend this to the entire country where you live right now. Finally, let's include the entire planet and all species on this beautiful home, the 
what we call Mother Earth. Include the planet itself and all of its five elements that make it up, which also make my body. Gradually bring your attention back to the hub, to the seat of awareness. To your silent heart space, the spiritual heart. When we can listen like this, when we can become so quiet to feel the presence of everyone and everything around us, that's how we can make a connection. And that's how from that connection arises understanding And from understanding comes peace. Every human being needs this silence, needs to listen consciously to live fully. In the heart of any spiritual path, is the silence and contemplation. Let us bring our hearts to, our hands to our hearts in prayer position. and give a bow of gratitude for everyone and everything that made this beautiful, peaceful moment possible. And at your own pace, I want you to gently open your eyes if you had them closed and come back into the awareness of this room in the circle, this beautiful living well. And I want you to share your experience. How did this go? Go ahead and type in your messages. I want to hear what this did for you. And if you can be succinct, then I'm happy to read this out to the gathering. And while you are coming up with the experiences and sharing them, I just want to give a shout out to those of you who have already donated. Your donations mean a lot. It goes a long way in supporting everything that makes my work possible and to be able to share that out with the world, with all of you all. 
I have a sound editor in Bosnia, I have a video editor in Colombia, a web designer in India, and a social media person in the Philippines, and so truly this is a global act. <laughs> Much like the message that we heard in the meditation, this is, there are so many beautiful arms, so many beautiful helpers, so many hearts coming together to make all of this word, this wisdom get out to as much as possible to the world and all of that is possible through your donations. Just be aware that Inside Thailand doesn't pay us <laughs> in case you did think that. It is only from your donations that all of this is possible so I welcome that and I'm grat great, deeply grateful for those of you who already made the contributions. So um, let's see. So I have depression. Okay so I'm curious the person who shared that, James, um, how did you feel? How did this change? I know that we all come with a lot of different aspects, whether it's stress, anxiety, depression, res uh, re resentment, etc. But the point is, this exercise, this one that I did, is a deep integration. It's integration of all aspects of your brain, integration of your body and your brain, your senses in your brain, and with your spiritual heart. So I'm just very curious to see how did anything, if at all, there was there a shift between when you walked in here about an hour ago to now? So please go ahead and say that. So, um, so let's see. You love this. Um, the five R's, you know, appreciation, summarize, ask. Okay, yeah, good. So five, the five aspects of so Jackie, thank you for summarizing that. Receive, appreciate, summarize, ask questions, and rasa. Okay, excellent meditation approach. Thank you, David, I appreciate it. It's a beautiful, says Sandra. Um, Beatrice says, beautiful. AJ says, enlightening. It was a very centering experience. Um, love your global help. Um, this, is a, this is grounding. I don't, know how, I don't know what this experience would bring. Um, but very fulfilling, so good. So that's the point. As long as you know you feel fulfilled, comes from that sense of contentment. You know, it's a complete shift in your attitude, and from that sense of completeness and a sense of bountifulness. You know, when you have a heart of generosity, comes creativity for you to be able to do things and approach issues in ways unlike ever before. Right. So that's very important that you recognize that. Thank you for all. Very well. Grateful. I feel peaceful and gentle experience reaching out so I'm hearing lots of beautiful things so folks why don't you go ahead and ask any questions um, so we're at that point where I'm happy to take any questions that you might have um, so Gurpreet is asking this question is this particular meditation available on YouTube channel just the last 30 minutes of today so great question um, so I will post this um, I will I will definitely post this on my channel now, I'm not allowed to give out my um, URL. That's part of the rules, and I'm going to play by the rules. So those of you who know me, you know, can find me, go ahead. But um, it will definitely, all this whole recording, including the last 30 minutes, will be out there. Fantastic. So felt calm, relaxed, allowing my mind to be focused. It felt amazing and something that can be done each day. Absolutely, absolutely. This is something that should be done each day like i told you you know minimum three minutes my thing is that i take an hour each morning i do not start my day without the breakfast for the soul folks that is the time no technology no other conversations the first thing is my time that's the time when you know when the subconscious mind is awake and it's about to fall asleep as the conscious mind is waking up for the day and all of your thinking processes your creativity your schedules are beginning to kick in it's an extremely powerful time for us to program our subconscious mind for us to be able to put in what we want by either through reading, through meditation, affirmations, use any of one of those techniques, uh, just even being out in nature. And like I told you, those beautiful things where you can even just assimilate the different channels that uh, let the sun, let the energies at the music, beautiful sounds of the birds and the, the um, nature lift you let that become the foundation the canvas if you will upon which you're going to draw and create the beautiful creation for the rest of your day so absolutely so that's very very important that you start your day that way yes Ida says I experienced a shift fantastic okay 
Uh, Patty's asking a question. How many times are you live on this platform? Okay, <laughs> great question, Patty. And it's interesting. The timing of your question could not be more appropriate. So um, I'm here once, uh, once a week on Wednesday, Wednesday night, 6 p.m. California time, 9 p.m. New York time. Uh, it's, I think, 7.30 a.m. in India, 1 p.m. in Sydney, and, you know, the rest of you, you, you know, when you joined. Um, and I actually, I'm soliciting, I'm, I'm looking for, right, you know, your feedback, and I want you guys to just share with me and say, is this once a week? You know, I've been doing this for the last um, 10 months since the pandemic started. It's been this kind of a routine that I get together once a night on a weeknight. It's a night for me, but I, I guess it's different times of the day for the rest of you. And I, I'm curious to know, and I'm completely open. Do you want other times? Do you want me to do this mo multiple times? I am contemplating that you're asking this question. Like I said, I was just wondering what if I offered a weekday morning? You know, that way I know many of my friends in Europe and Africa are unable to join me. I know there were some comments that were sent to me by I think somebody posted on my Facebook page from Italy and saying, Jared, love to really love to hear your um, episode today. But then it's three o'clock in the morning for it. So I'm just thinking, what if I did an episode, um, maybe a shorter meditation on, let's say, a Saturday morning Pacific time? Um, I want you guys to be, you know, please give me kind of a, a vote of confidence. I want you to give me a kind of a thumbs up to say how many people are really interested in me doing this more than once. Or if you guys are happy with this time, uh, then, you know, I will definitely stick with this time. And also, I'm very curious to hear the duration. I do this for about an hour. Uh, today, we're going a little bit longer, you know, so this is expected, but, you know, not a whole lot more and not a whole lot less either. Uh, you know, I feel like this thing about, you know, having a story to kickstart the conversation, uh, talk about some wisdom nuggets, uh, do a meditation and then take up some Q&A. So this has been sort of the format that has been working so far but again i'm completely open to suggestions and comments uh, if you don't get a chance to share your thoughts right now uh, you know how to find me on inside timer i'm there you can you know reach out to me there's a link on my profile where you can even send me an email um, i'm very curious to hear so, and also the topics that you want me to hear about uh, talk about you know because i picked up this thing the series i'm doing right now is attention is power so i'm taking different aspects of attention building and developing that because you know how this world, as I mentioned to you to do it today at the beginning, that the advent and the onslaught of technology is completely changing our ability to be focused. That even those little windows of time when we had the ability to read a book or take a shower or uh, just have a conversation, there's always something that's trying to compete for your attention. And so I thought that the series is something that's going to be invaluable for as we come into the new year, 20, 2021. Oh my God, what a year it's been already. What a year that we've left behind. So I feel like this is ever more so important uh, to talk about something about how we can all develop attention building exercises and practices. Um, and so a uh, weekday morning would be very nice. Okay, that's interesting. So weekday morning. Um, so there's a question, how do you avoid falling asleep while meditating, especially early morning? If I sit to meditate when I wake up, I end up falling asleep again. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's, very, it's, it's very common, not only just in the morning, but you could have the same experience even during the course of the day. When you have an evening meditation, a lot of times people are just, you know, there's a, a complete backlog of rest, you know, so the human body and the brain are screaming and saying the moment you give it a chance to slow down and listen to it it's saying this is first priority you i have been sleep deprived and i need to sleep in that case you have to listen right the body's trying to tell you and this is a time when you've finally quietened yourself where you're actually able to uh, listen to the feedback that your amazing circuitry the greatest technology ever which is your body it's speaking back to you it's giving you that first-hand feedback so maybe you need to sleep Right now, having said that, as you you know, imagine that you've slept enough and you know you're still falling asleep. As you practice, you will start developing the ability to get into that delta state. So there's a great similarity between deep um, non-REM sleep and deep meditation. Both those times, the subconscious mind is awake, the conscious mind is quietened down, and so because of association that from the time I was a little boy or girl, from the time I was a child, 
every time I relaxed so deeply was only when I was about to fall asleep, right? So we have that inbuilt into our subconscious and therefore we associate that kind of peace and that quietness and stillness with that moment when we're just about to fall asleep and so therefore we drop into sleep. But the, with practice, you will begin to realize, oh my God, you know, this is just profound. My subconscious mind is awake and I'm feeling like I'm, my body is just a separate entity and I'm separate and my consciousness is expanded. My thoughts are clear. My heart is opened up. And this is the time for me to actually channel all of this energy to be able to do, to set an intention to forgive for forgiveness or um, give out a blessing or, you know, en en envision something that you want to manifest in your life. Incredible superpowers are awake and available to you. You're also that time in sync with all of you, the spirits of nature or Mother Nature itself. And then all of that is working with you, for you, to be able to manifest that which you want. So a great thing to learn to not fall asleep. But then, if the body needs a rest, give it what is due. That way, you that's finished, that's done, over with. And then when you get down to meditate, you're nice and bright and awake. So... Noon Eastern during the week would be a welcome break. Yeah. Okay, so I'm getting mornings, I'm getting afternoons, weekday, weekend. Um, this is a perfect time, date and duration for me. Thank you, Sherry. Um, I'm interested in mornings like 6 or 7 a.m. Um, <laughs> CST. Well, that means I have to be up at 4 or 5 a.m. my time. Um, you know, so you should use some of the recordings. Like I said, there's all of these things that are available for you to watch later. And uh, there's so many, the 60 episodes out there. Um, and, you know, feel free to go ahead and, you know, you everybody has their own time in which they want to watch. And that's the beauty of the Inside Timer app that there's so many recordings. I think I must have about 75 different um, meditations. Some of them are series, some of them are standalone on all kinds of different topics on healing trauma dealing with uh, concentration, dealing with chronic pain, sleep, etc. So please help yourself at the time that you feel that it serves you best because it's impossible, you know, for you to be able to get that, um, everybody to kind of huddle at the time that we all want, you know, for individual needs and uh, things like that. So this time is good. And um, if add one in the morning Pacific time, a shorter one would be great as well. So yeah, so, so I feel like, you know, your suggestions and comments are kind of across all over the board and I do appreciate them. I welcome them. So I'm looking for patterns in that. And uh, so we'll see, you know, I'll just kind of sit with the universe and ask, you know, where I'm being guided to, uh, how many times and how long I'm, I should show up. So folks, again, one more time, a sh quick shout out for those of you who did make the donations and those of you, if you are considering it. Um, this goes a long way in supporting all of this work and just making this available in Bountiful with a big heart to all those people, to all those places where people don't have the luxury to be able to sit like this in a gathering uh, with, you know, the beautiful comfort of um, a home and being able to live stream me and, you know, all of us into the room and be able to share this space. And so I'm constantly working towards work, you know, producing content that helps people in every which way, shape or form in which to alleviate their suffering, to be able to pick them up just a little so that they can get a sense of hope, they can get a sense of support, they can get a sense of clarity in which they can go out and create the life that they want. With that, I want to thank you all for taking the time to be here with me today. I do very much appreciate your time and your commitment to keep coming back. Those of you are coming back, I just want to invite you back into the tribe. For those of you come for the very first time, I call this my soul tribe. So wherever you're joining from, be happy, be strong, be safe. And until I see you same time, same place next week, be well.